This episode of HBCU Pulse Radio is sponsored by Cricket Wireless. What's going on, everybody? This is Randall Barnes, the founder of HBCU Pulse and the host of HBCU Pulse Radio in the building for another special edition of the show on today. We are talking about everything concerning HBCU football. The season is back. This whole football season been crazy, REO, but like the HBCU football season is back and we got a lot to talk about. How you doing today? I'm doing wonderful, Randall. I'm, I, this weekend was a great weekend besides my Florida State. But other than that, my picks were looking very, very well. Very, very excited about this weekend. Yeah, listen, I, my, my picks were looking good, too. Um, I, I like how we how we started now. We, we might know something. You know what I'm saying? Might we might know what we, <laughs> we, know know. we talking about. We, we just out here just talking, all right? So let's talk about your game of the week, first and foremost, Florida A&M or South Carolina State, the debut of Chennis Berry as the head coach of South Carolina State. Fam, you was coming in with a 20-game home winning streak. I believe that's the second it, that's the second greatest in FCS thus far, I think, to like North Dakota State or South Dakota State, but they extended it. They won 22 to 18, but they saw what Chennis Berry was like. They saw what we had to deal with in the SIEC, and it honestly was an amazing game. Hey, shout out to ESPN Plus. Y'all really shocked me because that was a really good stream. That was a really great stream. It felt like I when we were watching out ESPN, and then it came on ESPN U later on that night. So maybe maybe they knew something too. So good job, ESPN Plus. So Aria, what were your thoughts on this game as this was your game of the week? And you know what? I, I, even though uh, South Carolina didn't get to upset FAMU, I thought it was a really, really great game, a great preview for Chance Berry, very great preview, not only on the defensive side, but also on the offensive side, I was very touched between KZ Adams and what they were going for. A little bit of QB fumbles, but it wasn't that bad. What they forced FAMU to do was really exceptional, too. Late late calls, late hits with that touchdown pass to KZ Adams, and then he got that late hit, so they had that late call. Then we had a couple of fumbles. I was very impressed at what Chenis Berry was doing with his team. Honestly, I wish they would have capitalized off of some of these things that were happening, some of FAMU's mistakes. I'm just here to say, Randall, you might be right. Dale Richardson is looking really, really, really good. I have no complaints about this man, but I'm super proud of what South Carolina State could have done. I'm actually impressed with Eric Phoenix. I think that was one of the things that we did touch on last week and then we also touched on this last year south carolina state had a lot of quarterback problems and they love to do a dual quarterback game they'll pull them out for some plays put another quarterback in and i really hate when you don't have that consistency in that line eric phoenix looked really good 12 for 25 132 yards one touchdown not too bad we're just getting we're just getting our momentum we're just getting our footing here so i don't expect him to be great but he looked absolutely exceptional and i love the deep plays the way that chennis berry had his offense set up we're not just going to play it safe with famu we're going to take deep takes we're going to run them through which i think they should stick to their running game which seems to be exceptional right now but we are going to try famu on everything that they think we're not going to be and i think those chances that chennis berry took in this game is what really brought them out to a close scoring game Overall, I'm not I'm not mad at them. Florida AM, all due respect, they they looked really great. Even with they had about six flags during this game, all towards the end of the third quarter, going into the fourth, but still ended up on top. The game was a little sloppy. I can't say that, but and ultimately to come out with the win, FAMU's doing what needs to be done. Listen, so I tuned in, Ario, and is this all gonna make sense? Okay, so right. you know it's it's this Labor Day weekend. <laughs> I didn't have a Labor Day. I was I was laboring, okay. That was what I was doing on Monday. Or everybody had had a nice day off. Oh no, I was I was working. We got to keep grinding over here, right? So I watched the Florida State game, the Florida State Boston College game. Okay, you got Florida State week zero. Everybody watched it. First football game of the day, week zero. They lose to Georgia Tech. Wow, that's interesting, right? So then you have Florida State. They lose to Boston College, twenty-eight to thirteen. So I'm minding my business. I, I'm about to clock out. A clutch boys, I'm, I'm about to go to bed. I'm like, I got this show tomorrow. I got to get prepared. I got stuff to do. Then I look at my phone 
and I see Shannon Sharp and Chad Ochocinco. Shannon Sharp, of course, is a Savannah State alumni. And then you have Chad Ochocinco, who loves FAMU down and is a resident of Tallahassee, Florida. This is what Chad Ochocinco said, Ario. The best football team in Tallahassee is Florida a and Matter of fact, he said this later on, matter of fact, fam, you might beat Florida State based on what I saw tonight. And you know what, Chad Ochocinco? I totally agree. And you know what, Chad? You know what? I believe, and I said this on Twitter, that if Daniel Richardson was the quarterback for Florida State, they'd be 2 in the area. Daniel Richardson something else. Daniel Richardson be winning games. He is a gamer. He is a playmaker. I saw you look at Aria. You're like, oh, he listen. You and you know it's true. You know it's true. He was at Florida Atlantic University. Florida State could have could have went and got him. He said, no, I'm going to the Rattlers. I'm going to the HBCU. And he is going crazy. Daniel Richardson, if, if you're selling me on, okay, these FBS guys are different. Like FCS is one thing. These FBS guys are different. I might believe you. Because Daniel Richardson is really that guy. And I might agree with Chad. I might agree with Chad Ochocinco, Ariel. I'm sorry. I might agree. Uh, you know, I, Florida State is having a really bad time right now. But let's talk about the Orange Blossom Classic between North Carolina Central and Alabama State. North Carolina Central won 31-24. There was a lightning delay. So it was a lightning delay that delayed the game for about an hour. It was on ESPN. It switched over to ESPN News. So, Ario, a lot of folks didn't even get a chance to see the conclusion, which I thought that that was really unfortunate because I know that like, some folks were watching their cord cutters, so they watched on ESPN, and then it was a mix-up because it's on ESPN News, and it's a whole other show on. So we got to really talk them like through this game and let them know really what it was. So I want to toss to you first, Ario. Like, what are your initial thoughts on this North Carolina Central win? I personally just... Randall, I didn't, I had, I didn't see anything new underneath the sun. You feel me? That's that's what a lot of people would say. I, besides, besides your quarterback change, I didn't see anything new that wouldn't have told me that Central was going to be the team that they were going to be. They had three different plays, three different touchdown plays, all coming before. If, if you guys just missed it, they went up twenty four and zero going into the halftime. That is the Central team that we know from last year, and the Central team that we know for t- the year before that. And all of these plays were under six minutes. So you have a team that can run down the field in 75 yards and three minutes, run down the field with 65 yards and under six minutes. This is a team that hasn't lost any tempo, any momentum, and that's what we know Central to be like. Now, if we're talking about their quarterback situation, if they weren't playing on these usual fast-paced tempos, Harris would have lost the game for them. He's not a bad quarterback but he's not the most efficient quarterback either. He's not a runner like Davius Richards. Unfortunately, as we saw, only going nine out of 18, missing almost about half of his passes. Most of them fell incomplete, 119 yards, only one touchdown. Personally, the person that won the game was Jamari Taylor. He was in every single play. Give him the ball. Throw him the ball. You know what? Let's run it back. You know what? Let's go ahead and have a kickoff return and just put it in Jamari Taylor's hands. If you're talking about the MVP, the person that really starred in that film is Jamari Taylor. Harris, to me, just has a lot more efficiency problems that needs to be worked out. And not, not it's not a coach, it's not a coaching thing, it's more a mentality team. You're filling really, really big shoes. Davius Richards was a runner. He was a playmaker. His football intelligence was through the roof. He was a leader. People trusted him. People acknowledged him. He was the MEAC player of the year almost two years in a row. So it, you you have those shoes that you can't carry. But let me tell you, the momentum wasn't lost. Jonah O'Brien, for the other side of the field, we're looking at Alabama State. I wasn't mad at Alabama State, but I wasn't exactly <laughs> it wasn't great it was if Andrew Body could play every everybody on the field if he could be a receiver if he could be a running back if he could be a quarterback if he could be a safety if he could be a corner if he could be a Andrew Body was playing all the positions on the field and he would have done it greatly but when Jonah O'Brien after Andrew Body got the field interception interception we have a fumble we have another interception we have a defensive Defensive flag. We have an offensive flag. Every single time that he had the ball besides one touchdown, it wasn't pretty. 
and those strong and everybody knows I hate a two, I hate a dual quarterback thing. You got to stick with one. But in this case, you know, when your one quarterback wasn't making, you got to throw Andrew Body in. And I think some of these things that Alabama State wasn't ready for, I don't think they were ready for the heat or the fastest that Central was coming with. But I also don't think they were ready for the defense that really didn't go anywhere. Most of their transfers were offensively, but I don't think they were ready. I don't think Jonah O'Brien was ready for what Central was going to put into their hands. All in all, Alabama State's two turnovers, to me, they had a really great game besides those two mistakes and besides John O'Brien not being able to capitalize and also just figure out how to find his players downfield. This game could have landed in Alabama State's hand. They came back towards the end of the third quarter, but I just think there is a little bit more room of improvement with Jonah O'Brien, but also offensively and just trying to find other targets besides Andrew Body. Andrew Body cannot carry your whole team. You have to try to make other plays. And ultimately, that's what led, you know, to your loss. I know you had so much faith in Alabama State, but I knew Central was going to come and show you why they could still be overall celebration champions, but also the top of the MEAC. I just had, it's so much shade going on in this episode today. I just thought, you know, I had to contribute to it. You know, that's, that's, that's where I thought we were going. <laughs> Listen, you and Eddie Robinson are a tag team in the shade. I'm telling you, like, y'all, it, it is a handicap match because I'm wrestling. It's a, it is a handicap match right now. It's like Drake and Kendrick 20 v one. Like this is what it is right now, man. Because listen, room for improvement is from Alabama to California when it comes to Alabama State. My God, that that the fact that it was 31 24 is 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 honestly an act of God because they they had that lightning strike, man. I'm telling you, they had that they had to, they had to stand back there. And they had to wait for the game so they could regroup and do something. Listen, you you said that Andrew Body was such a great player. He could have played all the positions on the field. He did play all the positions on offense. He played quarterback a little bit, okay? He finished four of six for 27 yards, okay? He played running back. We'll get to that in a second. And Ariel, he actually did play receiver. This is this is not this, this is the ESPN app. And I saw it with my own eyes, okay? He was lined up at receiver. You had Sean O'Brien that was at quarterback, and he caught the ball. He had one reception for nine yards. So he did. The only thing he didn't play was offensive line. And you know what? Eddie Robinson probably would have lined him up there too. But you know what? At least he would have seen the field. Oh, my God. Like, it's so easy. It can all be so simple, Ario, but they rather make it hard. Oh, my God. Like, why are you not playing one of the most prized transfers in the SWAC? You see him at Texas Southern. Like, they played Texas Southern, I'm pretty sure, a couple of times. He, this is not some guy, oh, he's from Division II. We really don't know. Because, you know, they love looking down at Division II schools. But we don't, he's from Fort Valley. We don't know if he's really good. He's over there at Texas Southern. Y'all have seen this man put up numbers, put up stats. You see he's a dual-threat quarterback. You see he can throw the ball. You see he can run the ball. You see all these different things. You know, this real cool photo shoot. He, he in the Alabama State jersey. He on campus and, and school is out, all this different stuff just to sit there and not play him, play this guy from Eastern Illinois University that had in his career, I think has nine touchdowns and eight interceptions. Are we for real here? Are we really being serious here? And you got Eddie Robinson Jr. out here playing. And I know or you might get sick of me. Oh, he's going to bring a college football 25. That was literally how Eddie Robinson Jr. was coaching that game. He was coaching that game like his college football 25 running the, the reverse option sweep. Dude, what are you doing? Why are you lining up two quarterbacks? Why are you lining up two quarterbacks like and say, hey, well, we don't know which one's going to be? Yes, we do. Yes, we do, because because Jonah O'Brien ain't about to go catch a pass. Like, oh my, like it, it, it was it was so. I, I, and think about it, I'm not even naturally an Alabama State fan. Okay, you know, I went to Fort Valley, and I do root for FAMU, but I must admit, I was rooting for South Carolina State because I really want to see Chenisberry succeed. But I felt like a fan. I felt like I was watching the Ravens, and it was Thursday, and like the Chiefs were winning. I'm like, what? Like, what is going on? Like, why? Like. That, like O'Brien is not good, and and I I just want to say it, say it as simple, he's not good. And I know this is not an original take from the HBCU side. 
They've been saying it. O'Brien is not good. O'Brien don't need to be no one's QB1. O'Brien needs to be getting folks water at this point. I'm sorry. Until he gets better. I'm sorry. And I'm normally metered. I'm normally metered. I will regret this later. Okay, I'm not cutting this out. Like, he need, he needs to sit on the bench and get better. He literally killed the game when he threw that last second interception. You have the ball back. You have timeouts. You literally could have tied the game. But guess what? You didn't play Andrew Body. You had him as a running back. 15 carries for 134 yards. And we're talking about Jamari Taylor. He's such a good running back. He is. But guess what? Jamari Taylor had 24 carries for 128 yards. And Andrew Body had 15 for 134. He had more yards than the running back for the winning team. Why? Why? What are we doing here, Eddie Robinson Jr.? Why? This ain't even about my pick. I I hate mediocrity, Ario. I really do. I hate mediocrity. I hate people going against the game plan. It was right there. You just put Andrew Body in. He is running through that North Carolina Central defense, and he didn't even try to have him throw. And then, lo and behold, what does Eddie Robinson do? He decides, well, you know what? Andrew Body's doing really good. So let's put him in to close out the game. Now that we have the ball back, let's put him in. Then they, they do another design quarterback run. Andrew Body gets injured. He holds his hand. He goes out the game. I'm like, oh, my God, I know this ain't going to happen. And then you got O'Brien comes back in, and what happens? Throws an interception. What was Eddie Robinson Jr. thinking? Hey, I'm done with all of this. I was almost done with HBC football. Okay. And so I'm like, well, I, I got to go to work tomorrow. Like, I'm like, I'm like I got to go to, I got to pay these bills. Okay. These bills, these bills, I got to wait till mid month to try to make a decision. It, it was terrible, Ario. It was terrible. I, Alabama State ain't going to no one celebration bowl. They ain't going to no one celebration bowl. And if Andrew Body is injured, if he is injured, it is a wrap. And, I, and Aria, we're we doing the picks later, okay? And I'm going to pass it over to you, okay? I'll tell you this, okay? I'm changing my pick. Fair use one the celebration bowl. Listen, forget everything I said yesterday or, or the last week. Forget the history. All the, no. Fam, you is the now, okay? They are going to the Celebration Bowl. They might just go back to back like Drake against Meek Mill at this point. That's what they're going to do at this point. They're going to lose two miles next week. Oh, Division Two. Oh, like they supposed to beat Division Two. They're not good. They have less scholarships. Miles is going to beat them again if Andrew Body does not play. And if Andrew Body is injured, God bless you, Eddie Robinson Jr. God bless you. God bless you, Eddie Robinson Jr. Willie Simmons, another job is open. Okay. At this point, if, if Andrew Body is injured, that's that is all. Right. I want to pass it back to you. I, that's it for me. So. I, it's speechless. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> there's 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 nothing there's nothing to say. Um, I mean, I, there. I don't think I think this could have been a closer game um, if the roles were reversed. Or if Jonah O'Brien just wasn't playing at all and all we had was Andrew Body, I don't think this would have been the double digit game that we saw. But I don't, this wouldn't have been the deficit that we definitely would have seen. And I think you spoke for yourself. I, we all hold that Andrew Body's not, <laughs> not injured because Alabama State is going to have a very, very rough season <laughs> with Jonah O'Brien. You're not going to have a choice but to play this man unless you, you know, you have a third string quarterback that nobody knows about, but listen, it, Andrew body shouldn't have gotten injured. That was on Eddie Robinson Jr. Because we know what the coach does. We know the coach sets those lineups and, and, and like they set who's the QB one, all the different stuff. Like, and then you say, Hey, office coordinator, this is what you do. If it's coordinator, this is what you do. But the, uh, the head coach sets up the, what's going on and they make those decisions. And he made the decision to make Andrew Body a running back. And Andrew Body did that so well. But that is why he was injured. Andrew Body's not a running back. He's a quarterback. He's a great runner, but he is a quarterback. It, it, it was it was just, it was so frustrating. It honestly, I, I, I'm not even joking, Ario. It was literally frustrating watching that game. Trey Oliver is such an amazing coach. And see, as sports fans often, and I, and I know, honestly, real talk, you, you see this with, with Florida State, with all the stuff going on. 
he, they, we always go to the coach like, oh, the coach needs to be fired. Or what's going on with the coach? That's what we do as sports fans. But I don't think as, as sports fans of any sport, we really appreciate good coaches. And I think in HBCU football, we do because we have coaches that are immortalizing lights. We have coaches that literally change the fabric of the game and how the game is viewed. They got guys in the NFL that, that help build the prestige of our programs. But I think as sports fans, especially as modern day sports fans, I always find the fault in what's going on. We do not appreciate good coaches. And what people saw on ESPN or ESPN News was a good coach in Trey Oliver. Walker Harris, he has room for improvement. I agree with you. He has room for improvement. But he, like, you know, it's, it, this is a thing in, in politics, Ari. I know you've heard it because you do a lot of amazing work. It's the thing of do no harm. So when, so when Kamala Harris was trying to choose a vice president, they were like, okay, you want to pick someone that does no harm. If she chose Tim Walls, who's done no harm, honestly helped that ticket. You want to bring in a quarterback to replace a generational player like Davius Richard that does no harm. And Walker Harris didn't do no harm. He didn't throw no interceptions. He didn't drop the ball and it was a fumble. Like he did what he needed to do. And he was essentially a game manager, but he also made plays. He made the right throws. He handed the ball off to the running back. He, that's all you have to do. You're not Davis Richard. And he knows that. And I think he did a good job. And I just think people missed it. And Trey Oliver he even is like, hey, we, we could have done better. But he is a great coach, Ari. And I, I just think that people don't understand that. And I, I, I really want people to understand what they see in Trey Oliver. Leading his alma mater, because I'm, I'm going to go history on North Carolina Central, because I don't ever say let me down. Leading his alma mater led them to the celebration ball in an improbable celebration ball that people thought they were going to lose because Deion Jack State was so good. Then they were about to go back, and then they were beating PWIs because it's worse. It seems like HBCUs are allergic to being PWIs except for North Carolina a and back in the day and North Carolina Central. They, were beat, they, they beat Elon last year. They, they had Richmond dead to rights because of Trey Oliver. Then Davis Richard gets injured. People are seeing one of our great coaches, and they're seeing a coach that in September, on Labor Day weekend, is like, oh, let me try out two quarterbacks. When everybody and they mama want Andrew Body on their team. I, I just don't get it, Aria. I, I'm, I just don't get it. Uh, Aria, listen, I'm telling you, Aria, if I didn't have work... <laughs> That next day, it was Monday. I would have been like, you know what? I'm done. I'm going I'm to start doing Georgia podcast at this point. Like, I, do, <laughs> I don't know. It's never that. Don't. It's never that deep to go over that. Go over there. It's oh, no, never, do don't do that. Don't do that. Never, never. Cricket with this speedy 5G network reminds you, HBCUs are all about networking, and there's no better way to network than on Cricket Wireless. Maybe that's why people who come to Cricket Stay with Cricket. Cricket 5G requires compatible devices and is not available everywhere. Discount varies per line. Additional fees, usage, and restrictions apply. See cricketwireless.com for details. Ariel, what's, what's your game of the week? You know, I'm going to have to run it back. It's not the greatest in the MEAC. We kind of veer off just a little bit when it comes to our in-conference play, but I'm going to have to run it back to a really great game, Elon versus Central only saying that because there is no Davius Richard, even though they did beat them last year proficiently <laughs> that I might add 34 to 23 really great game and a really great show of offensive leadership that they have put on, but I'm ready to see what Walker Harris has to bring now filling those bigger shoes and what Trey Oliver is going to do with them against Elon. Elon is not, they're not a bad team. They're not the greatest team, but this is one of those times where Central is being challenged and Central is known for dominating these kinds of PWIs, these kind of all white teams with their kind of leadership and their trying to skill set. And I would love to see them do it again. But like I said, this is kind of a momentum setting thing for Walker Harris. Is this our quarterback that will lead us maybe to the top of the division to another celebration bowl? Can we do it again? Or are we going to have to do some configuration when it comes to not having Davius Richard? I think that is the central thing that everyone is focused on right now. If central can actually prove that they're great again, and this is just, is going to be a test. So I feel like this Elon and central game is going to be really, really good. But it all depends on what Walker Harris can bring to the table. 
I love it. I love it. So your, your pick is, is going to be North Carolina Central for the win, right? It's, it's Central. Yep. Oh, of of course. I you know even if I go down losing, I I I feel like I I just need to see that the quarterback situation at Central is stable. That's mm-hmm. that's that's all. That's the big question that they have right now, and I have hope that Walker Harris is going to pull them through. Hopefully, he he's learned something. Yeah, I I, I think that North Carolina Central is going to win. Eli and play Duke. They they play Duke. They play Willie Simmons, Manny Diaz, and Duke. They I don't think they looked bad, but I mean it is Duke, and you know th- th- there are there are divides between good FBS teams and good FCS teams. I think that they're gonna want vengeance because they lost to North Carolina Central last year, but I think that North Carolina Central is going to win this game. Davis Richard went crazy last year against Elon. Walker Harris, I, I I have more faith in Walker Harris because I think that he is going to effectively manage the game. Like, he's not going to do too much out of what he's supposed to do. He's just going to do what he needs to do and get off that field. And as long as he does that and then gets better at doing that, because there was some miscues in uh, the Alabama State game, I think it'll be perfectly fine. And, and I think North Carolina Central will definitively win that game for sure. But my game of the week is Miles versus Alabama State. Okay? That is my game of the week. And listen, I have two picks, two picks. And, and please allow me two picks, sorry, because I because I I know it's like two picks. Like, I should do two picks. Listen, I have two picks, okay? If Andrew Body is not injured, first praise the Lord, okay? All right? If he if he is not injured. But if, 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 if he's not injured and Andrew Body plays and Eddie Robinson wakes up and says, you know what? I made a mistake. I am a man. I'm going, I'm going to make this change because that's what men do. We, we come out there and, and we say, hey, I'm going to take accountability. That's what grown people do. But as men, we're taught, you, you take accountability for your actions because life ain't, 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 ain't fair. Life is all that. Like, we're going to figure it out, all right? And if Eddie Robinson wakes up on Friday morning and says, you know what? I made a mistake on Sunday, okay? I'm going to put Andrew by He's going to be the starter. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to drop some. I'm going to have my offensive coordinator drop some running some, some running plays and some pass plays. And we're going to do some runs. That's fine. But we're going to pass the ball. We're going to do a slant. <laughs> like, we're going we to do something. We're going to do a wheel route. Like, we're going we gonna to do, we do something, okay? We're going to pass the ball. They will win, okay? But Andrew Body doesn't play. And Jonah O'Brien... <laughs> Walks out, he jogs out there on that field against the Miles College Golden Bears of the SIAC that almost beat Chinnis Berry and Benedict last year. That a lot of folks think they're just gonna beat Fort Valley, they're gonna beat Albany State, they're just gonna beat everybody and win the SIAC championship and maybe get a bid in the Division II playoffs with Sam Shade as the coach. Miles is gonna destroy them, like because I'm telling you what. People think, oh, well, this is this is FCS. That's the Division II school. Your classification for your school's athletic department is not playing on the field your team is. That's who's playing. So if Miles College looks like the Miles College that almost beat a West Alabama team, they, they lost by a field goal by, by one point, and they looked probably like the, like the best team in the SIC minus Clark Atlanta last week because they, they, they went and beat probably the school out of conference, a good West Alabama team, when the SIC teams, we folded against out of conference opponents, and then they're, then they're playing the team that they beat last year? Come on. But Andrew Body changes that equation because you saw – He's going to do his thing. But if you try John O'Brien out there because he's tall, okay? If you try him out there because he's tall, y'all will have a tall loss, okay? That's what's going to happen. So I'm, pick, I'm picking Miles if Andrew Body does not play. But I'm picking Alabama State if, if, if they do. And I feel like they need to be happy that I don't pick Miles if Andrew Body does play because I have no faith right now in that play call. I have no faith in it. I'm picking Miles whether he plays or not. There is okay. no, there is no way Andrew Body is coming out on this field this week. I not, I'm not, not. I don't want to speak into existence that he's injured, which would suck. We just got into this season, and this man transferred just to be your number one star, just to be injured for four to five games. That's trash. But also, I don't think if he isn't injured, 
I personally, and we talked we talked about this last week, the woes that would happen with Eddie George Jr. I already told you, it's not his team. It's him. He is the he is the Achilles heel to his team. He doesn't care his ego. That's that's me. That's just me. It's a co- it's not it's not a team problem, it's a coaching problem. And in me, I don't feel like he's gonna wake up and have a change of heart that he's been revived again. And the blood of Jesus is just like, listen, we washed all things clean. That is not what's going to happen. He's going to be like, okay, well, I'm sorry you got injured. And I'm glad that you're not injured. But for safety reasons, and because I believe in second chances, we're going to try Jonah O'Brien again. That's how I feel this conversation is going to go. And as Andrew Body, if you're still choosing this quarterback that caused two last-minute interceptions at the end of our game, that was sacked three times before we can even go up on a score that forced four punts during this game over me. I don't want to play with you no more. Not saying Andrew Body is about that. Andrew Body is a big team player, but you consistently choose a quarterback that makes nothing for you over me. Miles College is winning regardless of what happens. Is it really up to Eddie George? It's literally, honestly, up to him. Whether he's where Andrew Body is injured or whether he's not injured, you're gonna have to make the obvious decision to play the dude that everybody's been talking about and not Jonah O'Brien. And you know what? Everybody's not meant to be a quarterback. And we're talking about grace. Look at Travis Kelsey. He started as a quarterback. Now he's a tight end. Maybe Jonah O'Brien is your next best tight end or safety. Let's try him at anything else. That's that. You know what? That's the goal during practice this week. Eddie George, listen, this week, let's try different stuff with Jonah O'Brien. It might work out in your favor. Let's try that. Let's do that. But Miles College is winning regardless if Andrew Body's in there or if he's not. Because Eddie George is not going to have a change of heart. Listen, one thing I, I think I, I can guarantee is that Eddie Robinson Jr. is going to put John O'Brien at tight end or like at safety at some point in, <laughs> at some point in that game. He calls. He, he he might he might try him out as coach. I don't know. Like he might have his office coordinator. Here's the clip. <laughs> Put on the headset. Like go upstairs. Like <laughs> it's a home game. Listen, you know what you know what where it is. Go upstairs and call, and call some plays. He might do better there. <laughs> since everybody, since we want people to play multiple multiple positions on the team, which I'm I'm all here for. I love that. Let's make him versatile. Let's try him as a coach. Maybe he's great off the field. Then Let, let's try him as a grad assistant. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Jonah O'Brien, listen, all all jokes, but get your game up, my guy. That's, please, that's it. That's all we're telling you. Please, please, I, 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 at this, at, at this, let's try him as a fan. Like, go, go out, go out there, down set, go sit out, go sit down. Okay. <laughs> like, Maybe he'll be the Kirk Cousins to the Alabama State. Maybe we just need a good <laughs> boom box. A nice gold chain. We win. It. That's all I need. That's all. That's all they need. That's that's all. That's all that's going on, man. Loving you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My 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 my. Listen, this, this, this is good for the content, but bad for my mental health, boy. Golly, like Jesus. I, I cause I was like, man, they're gonna come back and win, and then then he came in. All right, listen. But hey, I, j- just know you will hear from me next week about this is just, just, just no oh oh detailed oh listen uh, we, we I, I don't know where it's streaming I'm, I'm gonna find it okay yeah. but let's talk about the other games of the week sorry we did really good we actually did really good so i ended last week 12 and 3 i was wrong on FAMU south carolina state i was wrong on the labor day classic because prayer you did lose that game and i was of course as we've been talking about wrong on the orange blossom classic but it ain't my fault okay you were <laughs> you were 11 and 4 Okay, you were wrong on Norfolk versus ECU, Morgan State versus Hampton, JSU versus ULM, and Gramlin versus Louisiana. But the one thing I like is that you had faith in these HBCUs. <laughs> and, and, and maybe you shouldn't have faith in our HBCUs for that one. All right, you probably had a better record than me. You had a better, you had a better record than me. <laughs> Listen, this is the record that I hold foreshadowing that the Falcons have all, oh, all yeah, these true, records, sure. all these records sound like some AFC records these are sounding like some Bengals records sounding like some some freaking Baltimore records like with this no. is not sound this isn't sounding south at all we we might go undefeated man we might, we might start with this win against the Chiefs we might we you, you know you know you never know you never you see you saw that shirt I got on 2020 we're gonna put 2024 right here 2024 right there champion Against Patrick and the number one paid tight end. I'm sorry. 
That's hey, look, just not happening right We now. got, man, listen, Patrick Mahomes my guy. And Travis Kelsey, listen, that's my guy too. I ain't got no smoke for the Chiefs. But get, but guess what? We can get back on Thursday. We can <laughs> get back on Thursday. Just, just, just wait. Just wait. I'll listen, be waiting. But I'll, tell, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what I know. That Lamar Jackson going to play better than, than O'Brien. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. <laughs> That <laughs> any any anybody can play better than O'Brien right now. Yeah, he, he needs to listen. He needs to get in that lab and figure it out, man. Figure it out. But all right, so the MIAC, okay, so South Carolina State versus the Citadel. Aria, who you got? So listen, I am going to pick Chenis Berry because I still have hope that what I saw in last week's game, what's happening right now is the complete shift for South Carolina that I haven't seen in two years. Not Buddy Pugh's fault. Player's fault. Nobody nobody should ever blame Buddy Pew. It's never Buddy Pew's fault. That's just me. That's how I'm putting it out there. But I think Chenisbury might have one in the bag. I'll take my own if he doesn't. But I'm excited to see what they can do against the Citadel. I pick South Carolina State, too. I, I think I like what I saw against FAMU. I think that the FAMU game would be tougher than this game. Uh, I know this is out of conference, but I, I think that, especially from what I saw last year, what I saw last year with how South Carolina State beat them last year, I think that this team with the transfers you brought in and then you have some guys that are held over from the Buddy Pugh program that are at South Carolina State. I think if Eric Phoenix has a good, clean passing game, he's able to also run effectively. And the receivers catch the ball, okay? If they catch the ball. Oh, South Carolina State will win this game, I'm telling you. So I'm picking South Carolina State as well. All right? So this is actually a really good one. So this is a rivalry game. Virginia State versus Norfolk State. Virginia State, of course, they're in – uh, the CIAA, and then you have Norfolk State that's in the MEAC. Fun fact, uh, Virginia State actually beat Chinnisbury's old employer uh, at, at Benedict College on NFL Network. That was actually during uh, the game uh, with, with Alabama State versus North Carolina Central. And honestly, that whole entire game, uh, I was just thinking, and have you seen the SpongeBob episode where, like, SpongeBob starts to work for, like, the, the chum bucket? And, yes. then, and, and and the next scene, this kitchen's not the same with this kitchen's just not the same without you. That's yes. Tim Barry and Benedict. Like oh. it's just a greasy spoon. I'm telling you, without <laughs> you, that's like, that is that is Chittis Barry. That is Chittis Barry. That's the theme right now. Come back, coach. Anyway, Virginia State is is they, they were looking good. And they look good. And Dr. Frazier, he is an amazing coach. And they beat Norfolk last year. So who you got, Ario? Well, you know, I wasn't choosing Norfolk State regardless. Okay. They just never, they've never been on my roster. I'm sorry. Since we've been so lethal throughout this whole episode, we might as well keep going. Might as well keep it a buck. Um, they they weren't going to win this game to me regardless. I was definitely going with Virginia State. That wasn't even a question. I'm sorry, Randall. I'm going with I'm going with, I'm going with Virginia State as well because hey they look man Virginia State looks so good. Doctor Frazier like I gotta just give my hats off to him he, he honest he's a really good coach I think he and his coaching staff are really good in recruiting like they have NFL prospects on that roster and and I it was a crazy game last year they didn't just beat down Norfolk I'm not I don't think that they will but that game was was crazy it went viral for the craziness at the end of the game that then led to VSU winning. So I, I just, I, I think it's going to be a cleaner game. Uh, I, I I do, I do think that Norfolk has some guys, especially that one, that running back room. And if that running back room, Kavon King and that crew, they, they get going. Oh, I, I don't know. But Virginia state, I'm going to ride with the C I double A. Cause they beat down SIC last week. I'm not going to hold you. Okay. They beat, they beat us down. So I'm going to, I'm going to pick them. All right. So we already picked Elon, North Carolina central Morgan state versus Towson. So, Towson actually beat Morgan State last year, but Morgan State looked really good against Hampton. So who you got? Man, shout out to them because I'm always on their head. Morgan State just really gets on my nerves with these last-minute mistakes. And I think it was last year, too, they had a last-minute mistake. I think it was either a missed field goal or a, a sack on the quarterback that caused them to lose against Townsend. I can't be for sure, but I know last year's game was just their fault, respectively. <laughs> I'm actually going to make a flip this week and be a little scared, but have hope in Morgan State beating Townsend this year. I thought Morgan State looked amazing against Hampton. They they employed a heavy running attack, which we'll talk about more in, in a second when it comes to Hampton. I think Towson wins this game, though. I think Towson wins this game. Um, 
I, I just don't know. I, I want them to prove me wrong. I think Towson wins this game only because I still have questions on, on that offense. The running game looks amazing, but I just don't think you're going to be able to run every team down, especially, especially if you're trying to play these out-of-conference opponents. You're going to have to throw the ball, and I want to see what they have in that quarterback room when it, when it comes to throwing. Okay, so <laughs> Mercy Hurst and Howard. Howard actually looked good in spurts, uh, especially that running game. E- Eden James, for sure, but just Rutgers just ultimately – just dominated in that second half. Like, and, and Mercyhurst, I'm not that familiar with them. We got to do some Googles on them. But what do you think? Who wins this game? Yeah, I'm not that familiar on Mercyhurst either. Um, have mercy on them. You like what I did there? Playing against yeah. Howard. How, um, you know, if we're if we're talking about the familiar, um, I I might have to stick with Howard. I still believe that they're a really, really great team. And they're uh they're great on being built on the fundamentals when it comes to just keeping it a basic game, making sure that they have these kind of turnovers, holding the line, playing playing that man to man coverage. They're a really great team, and I think last week, you know, playing records that's hard. I don't think that really speaks to any of them. Uh, the Howard team that we know, the Howard team that has topped multiple teams, the Howard team that has beat good teams like Central. So I'm going to stick with them. So Mercyhurst was two and nine last year, and I believe they, they're they're a Division two institution. So shout out to them. They were two and nine last year. Yeah, they're Division two because they play they play Shepherd, they play Ferris State, and they're playing they were playing really good defense like they were really good D two teams. They lost to Ferris State twelve to fifty four last year. They won against Lock Haven forty one to twenty nine. Number ten ranked slippery number ten ranked slippery rock. That's a real score. I'm not even making it up. Slippery that's, rock. Okay. That's crazy. Right. Guess what? They like man. They like like Mercy her slipped and fell. They lost seventy five to thirty one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't. So, so listen. It, 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 if if Howard and they, and they won last week, okay. I just said that they they they, they won last week. Okay, they yeah. maintained their footing last week at this point. Okay. Like, like Willing University, they won 28 to 25, okay? So they play Howard. This is them playing up, okay? This, this is their money game at this point. Howard, Howard better win this game decisively for the swag. All right. All right. This one's personal, okay? Tell you yeah. why it's personal. Mercer versus Bethune-Cookman, okay, Ariel? Mm-hmm. So I'm from Macon, Georgia, right? So Mercer is our hometown university. My yeah. mom went to Mercer. My aunt went to Mercer. My dad currently works at Mercer, and I'm very proud of him. He's also a student because he's he's going back to school to get his his degree. So I'm very I'm very proud of him. All right, he says he's a double bear because he works there, and also he's a student there now. Okay, I applied to Mercer Ario. Okay, and I'm writing books. I think I'm really. I think I hopefully I've shown in this episode and in other episodes since you know me that I'm a really smart guy. I try. Okay, they didn't accept me because I did great on on, on my reading SATs. I like the 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 verbal. And the math, I didn't do all that great. They did not accept me, and ultimately, I landed at Fort Valley. So I'm not even going to lie. It's been smoke for Mercer since 2015, okay? <laughs> not- <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you have a personal vendetta against Mercer? And I didn't, I, I actually didn't want to go. But, like, listen, the fact that I didn't have the choice is what really irks me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I didn't just to choose Fort Valley. Fort Valley chose me, and I, I, I'm upset at that. Like, what happened to your ACT scores? Why didn't you send them? Why didn't you send on, them? I only took the SAT, so I guess that's a blessing. <laughs> I only took the SAT, <laughs> and I got, I got, I got it. Fort Fort Valley chose me. I, listen, I, literally, I had no other choice. Because <laughs> like, like, Mercer, Mercer was like, no. So listen, Mercer had a really good season last year, and I'm I'm very happy for them. As as listen, I wasn't supposed to be on HBCU alone. They weren't supposed to be on HBC Pulse. I was doing Mercer Pulse at this point. How my family rock? Like we weren't supposed to even be doing this. We're supposed to be talking about what the Bears doing. Okay, so it's in my family. But listen, I need Bethune Cookman. Let me make my pick first, Ari. I need Bethune Cookman to beat them down. Beat them down for all of the students that did well on their verbal SAT and they didn't get picked. It's probably thousands of them. Just beat them by 50, okay? Just beat them. But listen, I'm picking Bethune Cookman, Mario. It's personal, all right? (laughs) 
Well, you're going to have to keep letting it be personal. Oh, wow. Mercer is definitely going to be <laughs> down with Boone Cookman. Let's, I, I love Mercer. I had a couple of high school friends that have went on and got accepted. No offense. I'm so sorry, Randall. I didn't know you. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't say much about you. But you are, you know, that I can see why you passed that verbal part. You are excellent. Your vocabulary <laughs> is up here. It's great. I'm not saying that you're not good at math. You're probably excellent. You just didn't, you just didn't get it. You know, and that's okay. That's okay, but Mercer has an amazing football team. I'm so sorry. I don't care what celebrity son go there. It's not happening. They might still do the concert, though, because you they need those connections. But I, I'm sorry, Mer It's Bethune-Cookman. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, and I'm so sorry they didn't choose you. Like, I feel so sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be fair, I, I wanted to go to Fort Valley. Though. That, that, that was the thing. I'll say this, though. I'll say this, just the personal... You know, because my dad worked there, I could have got there free. I could have went free. The only thing we would have paid for was room and board and books. So it would have been definitely a different financial situation. But they, 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 they didn't pick me. So now I'm in debt. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> now you, see. you know, maybe maybe a master's. Maybe a master's. Look at me now. There's, 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 your resume is looking pretty nice now. What? We'll see. Like, like I, I have to. I have thought about that. I'm not going. I have thought about that. But like, you know, what? We'll, we'll see. You can't hate outside the club if you can't even get in, Randall. Oh yes, I can. Oh, watch me. <laughs> <laughs> watch me. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna show you how it's done. Okay, watch me. All right. See you on the winning side, Mercer. We'll see. You okay. On the <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. So, fam, you. Versus Miami. So once again, okay, Chad Odesico said that FAMU, they are the best team in, in Tallahassee. So with that in mind, who are you picking? Um, I personally had a personal, like, hit my manager and my booker um, were coming at me at my national news station, watching that Miami game, watching them play the Gators and beating the Gators. Um, you know, fam, you, you have proven to be an amazing team. You have a great quarterback in Daniel Richardson. You have an amazing running back room. The defense is powerful, but this is the you, Miami, who right now is looking too good and who is knocking heads left and right for every team that they play. I pray this is a close game, and I wish that Ocho Cinco was right. But I think Miami takes this one. This is just one that, you know, Lee's FAMU is 2-0. They're about to be 2-1, and one, unfortunately, because Miami is just, they're on something this year. I don't know what's in that water, but it, it it's looking really nice. But FAMU, I'm so sorry. This is going to be your first loss of the season. For sure. Um I think that when you look at FAMU, they have the skill talent. Oh, yeah. It, it's, it's just, it's, I think it's going to be the trenches. Yeah. And I, I think that what's going to happen is this. I think Miami wins. I think that Daniel Richardson, no matter what the score is, he's going to look good because he's played against FBS competition. I think he's, he's going to look amazing, and we're going to be raving about him next week and then when they eventually get into SWAC play. But I think that Miami does win just only because it, it's going to be the difference is going to be the trenches and probably just like the skill positions on defense. But I think that Daniel Richardson shows that he's the guy. And I think it's going to be a few guys because that's what Coach Cozy is telling him. Like, hey, this is your time to show out. You want to make the NFL? This is your time to show out. Like, this, this is that opportunity. If you have a ranked Miami team that's really good, that has a great defense, like, go out there and show out. I think I, I wonder if it'll be like what Fami did against South Florida last year. They, they looked yeah. very competitive against them. And they they ultimately lost, and we we talked about it. Where if fam, you play South Florida, they lose thirty eight twenty four, and you you see a South Florida team that takes a Nick Saban team to the limit a bit. Like they play great defense. It's a low scoring game, and you have fam, you that played South Florida better than Nick Saban's Alabama did. So I know those are like the moral victory type of things, but I think that that says a lot for what that program was under Willie Simmons. I think that Miami wins, but I do want to say this. If Willie Simmons was there and they brought in the Flo the Florida State recruits they were bringing in, I think some of them left when, when Willie Simmons uh, ultimately went to Duke and there was some other guys that they were targeting. And I'm, and I'm pretty sure if Willie Simmons was there, that team would look a little bit different. 
when it comes to who stayed, who he brought in, based on his philosophy on offense, I honestly would have picked FAMU for the upset. And I was ready to. When, when I saw Miami scheduled, I'm like, they're going to do the impossible. Like, they're, they're going to beat Miami. But with Willie Simmons left, that sort of left my hope a little bit when it, when it comes to that. So I think Coles is an amazing coach, and I think he, he knows what's up. But, you know, I, I, like the goal is to not leave that game injured and get Daniel Richardson, get Kelvin Dean, get, like, I get your guys some looks, and then now it'll be all good. But I think that Miami does win this game. So Tuskegee and Grambling. So this is a historic game, Ariel. Yeah. Because yeah. Tuskegee and Grambling have a shared history, you know, mm-hmm. when, when, it, when it comes down to it. Because the history is that essentially, like, Grambling called up Booker T. Washington and asked, hey, how can we do what y'all are doing? And Booker T. Washington said, hey, here's what's up. Here's the game plan. And in, in comes Grambling. You know what I'm saying? So, listen, Booker T. Washington, you got Eddie G. Robinson, you got Doug Williams, you, know, you got all these amazing teams. Tuskegee is, is a great, like, football program, a great institution, top 10 HBCUs, U.S. News and World Report. But they ain't look like a good football team against Johnson C. Smith. Like, good God almighty. On ESPNU. <laughs> They, they did they did not look good. John C. Smith like beat Tuskegee, but guess what? Fort Valley ain't had them problems. Okay, we beat John C. Smith all right, in the Florida Beach Bowl. Okay, <laughs> for the SIT. All right, so but look, I love Tuskegee. I love Tuskegee. Shout out to my guy Kendrick, D two HPC football. But who you think wins this game? You know, like the the history between them is great. I think these teams, out of all the kind of, you know, the rivalries or the teams that are supposed against each other, I think this is the only teams where, like, it's not bad blood. It's just like, what's up, brother? Hey, brother. You know, just really, really good football between them. Personally, I would love to see Grambling with, win this one. Mm. I was, I was going to pick Tuskegee until last week. I was going to pick Tuskegee until last week. And that was actually going to be my game of the week until Eddie Robinson Jr. happened. Until, until Eddie yeah. Robinson Jr. happened, oh, that was going to be my game of the week. And I was going to do a whole tie right up. It was going to be so amazing. I was going to show why Mercer should have admitted me. Okay? I was going to give history. <laughs> I was going to give the history. <laughs> it wasn't because of your writing. We know what your downfall was. It doesn't matter how good this article was. Unless you're going to throw some numbers in there. The I was going to add it up. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was added up or I, I was I, it was I was added up I, I, I was gonna be like two plus two tell you tell you that much what is your pick what is your pick Grant Gremlin my pick, my, my, my pick is is Gremlin but hey listen HBCU go has that game they did an amazing job we're not doing division two picks but like they did an amazing job on the Fort Valley Clark Atlanta game it look phenomenal and Ariel it, it was actually streamed you know you have the OTT like you have the Roku channels you have the free channels the game was actually streamed on the free channel on the Roku channel that's how we watched it we, we didn't have direct TV or anything like that we watched it like through the free o- the free over over the top channel so that's good and I think that's great HBC Go is doing that and I know that they are going to do a tremendous job showcasing the shared history between Grambling and Tuskegee. It honestly is a beautiful history that says a lot about our institutions. And I think a lot of us are going to watch that game and they're going to learn something. But Kentucky State versus Alabama a and Kentucky State, SIEC, they got beat down by mm-hmm. Virginia Union, 69 to seven. Okay, mm-hmm. Jada Byers was running all, all through that defense. Alabama a and listen, they can't talk. They got smacked by Auburn. Okay, <laughs> like got 76 points. What, I thought 76 points? Put up on, I think, 76 to three. So you have two teams that essentially, man, they might be demoralized. They might be like, why do we even show up on week one? Like, like we we need to get a win. So who do you think wins this game? I mean, that's tough to say, honestly. Um, you know, I'm going to go against my better judgment and still be, you know, HBCU strong and say Alabama A&M might have the moral win in this story maybe their confidence built back against kentucky state alabama and is gonna win this game kentucky state then the siec um we were very confident in their run defense against union mm-hmm. it did it didn't show up it didn't show up at all and i think alabama and m i think connor Maynard is coaching for his job but anybody that has since like us, we're not gonna hold that Auburn loss against him. So I think that Alabama and Alabama and wins that game. But another Division Two 
FCS matchup, Jackson State versus Lane College. Jackson State lost to ULM. They should have won that game. They should have won that game. I, I know I picked ULM. I wanted Jackson State to win, but they didn't look good at certain portions. Lane College, they've not been looking all that great recently. So who you got here? I'm going to see if Jackson State can redeem themselves. Was a little disappointed in them last week at just how they played and the sloppiness of the game actually wasn't like Jackson State at all. But to me, this should be an easy win this week. A confidence booster if they have it if they lose to lane we have some questions and we have some things to talk about next week listen lane is not gonna win this game it's jackson state but listen texas southern versus rice so texas southern actually won against prairie view in the labor day classic i wouldn't call it an upset because like I don't know if any of us had any expectations for that game outside of his labor, his labor day classic but like hey chris dishman he, he did he did really good and and I'm I, I'm very high on him especially after that game and they play a Rice team that has routinely beaten HBCUs in the SWAC so who you got for this game? I mean that's the game that I think um, I beat you for wasn't it or that was yeah you? it was it was no 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 you got you got me you you pick you play you said you played Devil's Advocate and you picked Texas something that's what you said <laughs> I went back and watched it you played Devil's Advocate and the Devil won I guess you know. Oh, that's why I mean, listen, guys, he's never, he never wins for all, for all our Christian followers. He never wins. Um, I just, you know, I like going against the grain here. Um, I'm going to stick with my pick. You know, sometimes you don't want to differentiate too much from what mm-hmm. you know, right? So I'm going to stick on this tux, Texas Southern train. I mean, if they lose, go all power to them. But I believe this is a game that they could pull off, and I would be extremely proud and shocked if they do. Rice is going is going to win this game, but I, I think that Texas Southern is going to have some some players look really good in this game. Um, and I'm I'm very proud of, of Chris Dishman. That Texas Southern coaching job, as you know, was it was really weird how they handled that in the off season. So I'm glad that you have a Chris Dishman there that's that's making it happen for him. So Savannah State. Versus Southern. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> who you, who mm. you got? Who you got? I, I, got, I have no description for that. Who you got? <laughs> you know, I haven't looked much into Southern. I know that they did lose their game last week and against McNeese. Um, I think that is a game that you actually beat me in, yes. but Big mm-hmm. is a pretty good school as well. I don't think it speaks to Southern, but Southern did have a couple of struggle bus problems going to the end of the swag season last year, which they could have ran it, but they were just having some fundamental issues. Um, for Sagan, you know, I haven't been much of a swag person, but I think I'm going swag this week and I'm going to say Southern. Yeah, I mean, Southern wins this game. Listen. South um, Savannah State, love Savannah State. They're one of only three HBCUs in Georgia. That's a public HBCU. It's Fort Valley, Albany State, and Savannah State. So there's a kinship that we we all have, I, even though sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't feel like it sometimes because we're very far away from each other. But, you know, it, it's a kinship. We're the only three public HBCUs in, in the state of Georgia. But Savannah State is not going to beat Southern. If but if they did how how they looked against me, Nice, I wouldn't be surprised if they, if they did, but I don't think they will because they look horrible against me, Nice. Okay, so Prairie View AM versus Northwestern State. Prairie View lost in, in, in Labor Day Classic, Northwestern State. Grambling, I believe, actually beat them with Hugh Jackson. I believe that this is who they beat. So who so who, who you got for this game? Um, I'm not going to why do you? I'm not too familiar with Northwestern State. They are kind of oblivious to me. So, but I don't, the way Prairie View look, I don't see this as like a great game for them, but I might go with them just because of my lack of knowledge for the other team. Okay. Uh, that's fair. So let let's let's look at the demons. So they, they they're the demons. Okay. So the northwestern the northwestern state demons. So I believe if I'm looking at this score correctly, Ariel. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. They lost to Tulsa 62 to 28. Okay. Mm. And that was that was that that was their, their week one. So mm. they so so they 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 were a tune-up game for Tulsa. Mm. I pray of you. We we gonna agree. I got prayer view. So yeah. Mississippi Valley State versus Lamar. Mississippi Valley State is Mississippi Valley State, and they still are ultimately. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and God, like, no, I, I love them. But football, they're still who they are. Athletics, they still are who they are. And Lamar is actually a real, a really good FCS opponent. Who you got here? Obviously, it's not Mississippi Valley State. I'm, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, maybe they'll they'll prove to us that they'll get better, but not not today. Yeah. So listen, Lamar is gonna win this game. Just a a real brief thing on Lamar. They're zero and one. They lost to Texas State. 34 to 27, you know, so they, they had a little bit of, of like a shootout with them. And then they finished six and five last year. Uh, they they lost 17 to 42 to number eight Idaho, but they started to pick up some really good wins later on in the season. They beat Northwestern State, who's going to be playing Prairie View. Uh, so, yeah, like like they they're they are middle of the pack team when it comes to, to the FCS. They're middle of the pack. But I think that ultimately they'll be Mississippi Valley State, unfortunately. Now, Alcorn State versus Vanderbilt, SEC. And Vanderbilt is actually racking up wins. So, Aria, who you got? Alcorn State and Vanderbilt. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. I, I'm actually proud of them. I was surprised that they won that game. I'm very proud of them. So, it's I'm going to go with Vanderbilt. Yeah, so v- Vanderbilt is going to win this game. Hopefully, Alcorn, they get the opportunity to showcase their skill. But I think ultimately v- Vanderbilt does win this game. There's not even much more we can say about that. Do we have do you have do you have a pick for UAPB versus Arkansas Baptist? Because I think I think UAPB wins this one. UAPB is Arkansas Baptist. Who are they? Oh my god! I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just like like for real. Who are they? So they they actually in HBCU. So Ar- Arkansas Baptist. They're a private Baptist affiliated HBCU in Little Rock, Arkansas. They were founded in 1884 as the Ministers Institute. Uh, They were funded by the Colored Baptists of the state of Arkansas, and they're the only historically black Baptist school west of the Mississippi River. Okay. So that is who they are. They're they're, they're HBCU family. Listen, shout shout out to our family over there, University of Arkansas Baptist. But yeah, UAPB wins this game. And yeah. UAPB needs this win because they got beat down by Arkansas on that Thursday. And so much, so many folks were talking trash about mm-hmm. UAPB. And they were just saying so much disrespectful stuff. And I just really need for these HBCUs to stop scheduling the school. Like, stop doing this. I mean, we need we might need the money, but come on, play, play an FCS team. Because I was so they were like, of course, a JUCO will lose to Arkansas. UAPB's in a swag. This not they're not a JUCO. What are you doing? Y'all? talking about like, it was so disrespectful but i tell you what they won on they won in the stands they played kendrick lamar not like us at halftime and they played cody rose theme for in wwe he's WWE champion undefeated champion they played kingdom it went viral and that was like sort of the headline of the game listen and i wrote a real cool article on it i was able to argue for the first time inter- intertwine hbcu and wrestling and it made since I went into, I talked about the American dream, Dusty Rose, Aria. I talked about that. I was proud of myself. I like, like I talk, I was talking about history. Cause listen, if you ask your parents, cause they used to, like, our parents used to watch WWE. If you, if you ask them about WWE and, and, and WCW and all this stuff, NWA, they're like, hey, who's your favorite wrestler? They'll say all the American dream, Dusty Rose. They love this some Dusty Rhodes. And that's, and that is Dusty Rhodes' son, Cody Rhodes doing his thing. They played the theme song for Cody Rhodes. Listen, it sounded amazing, but that football team looked horrible out, out there against Arkansas. So listen, at least the band won. That, that, that's, that's the... <laughs> <laughs> An HBCU band is always going to win. Don't ever, don't ever play about it. Don't always. Play about it. Always. Hard, hard times. Tell you. Hard times like, like Dusty Rhodes promo, man. Hard times breed better men. Hopefully <laughs> enough for that, that for, for UAPB. Shout out to Cody Rhodes, all right? So Tennessee State Versus North Dakota State are your OMG. That's what I put. I don't know if you saw that. I put OMG. And I knew this game was coming, but I didn't know it was going to be like this soon. Like they looked, listen, let me start off saying this. 
they looked amazing against Colorado, and it woke a lot of folks up that mm-hmm. FBS ain't the be all end all. Like Colorado looked good, Shador Sanders, Jimmy Horn, and you had Travis Hunter that had that crazy catch. But North Dakota State could have won that game. And they did. Then they are not under this new coach. They are not going away from their identity. They run the ball. They're rough and tough, and they're physical. Eddie Joyce tried to hire North, a North Dakota State guy as his OC, but he ultimately left and took another job. So Eddie George, they they looked really good against Mississippi Valley, you know. But I, I would love it. I would love it if Eddie George did the impossible and pulled off a win against North Dakota State. But the North Dakota State that I saw against Colorado, that ain't happening. I'm picking North Dakota State. Oh, great. I'm glad we're on the same page. I thought you were about to pick Tennessee. No. If NCAT and me know anything. No, North Dakota State can ball, yeah. Okay, North Dakota State can ball. Yeah, they balled out on y'all. I'm not going to lie. (laughs) But but, that's too much. That's too much. (laughs) It's not going to be too much, but I'll say say this. They didn't get A&T at their best, though. Because that game was supposed to be earlier. Because that, 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 that game was supposed to be in 2020, but COVID happened. Because that game was supposed to be right after A&T won the celebration for whatever it was still in the MIAC. That, yeah. that was what that game was supposed to be. So that, and it was supposed to be a dream matchup of, okay, the, our HBCU best, our Celebration Bowl champion versus like a perennial like FCS champion. That was what I was supposed to be. But then you, you, you get like A&T, you know, they, they, they're coming out, they're trying to, you know, to figure themselves out. And it just didn't work out. But, you know, and I, I, a game I would have loved to have seen since we're on this topic, Deion's Jackson State versus that North Dakota State team around the time when Deion was at Jackson State. Yeah. That's essentially what that Colorado game was, it felt like to me. It, it really felt like that that's would have been similar to what the game would have been had Deion's Jackson State played North Dakota State. But, you know, we'll never see it, you know. Um, and, yeah, I mean, we got, we got as close as we could with this one, so... That is where it is. So we, we both picked North Dakota State. So Virginia Union versus Hampton. So Virginia Union, that's Jada Byers and the crew. Yes, Hampton, we know him very well. Yeah, we knew Hampton lost to Morgan State. I'm going to get mine first. This is Division Two versus Hampton. I'm picking Virginia Union for the upset because Morgan State could not stop that run. Or, or they couldn't stop. Hampton couldn't stop that run versus Morgan State. Morgan State rushed for 255 yards on 55 attempts. I don't think they have anything for Jada Byers. Jada Byers had an amazing rushing game en route to that 69-7 win. I think they don't stop Jada Byers. I think that, yes, like Division II, all this and that, but Virginia Union has a crazy offensive line. So I think that they're going to open the lanes up for Jada Byers, and Hampton is going to be in for one. I think Hampton might actually pull this off. Yep. I think they'll be able to contain Jada Byers. I think what we saw against Morgan State, I think it was a really lucky game. Not saying Morgan State didn't come to play. I'm very proud of them and what they were able to accomplish. But I don't think that was Hampton's best. And as close as that game was, I don't think Hampton is willing to go 0-2 at the beginning of the season. Hmm. That makes makes good sense. That makes good sense. I love it. So we got to end off with your alma mater, North Carolina A&T versus Winston-Salem State. Let me say this, Ariel, to just close out. And he looked really good against Wake Forest. They looked really good. And, and I know that the, the, the final score doesn't indicate it, but they that first half, they looked phenomenal. And I thought they were going to pull out that win. So mm-hmm. I'm actually very high on A&T, surprisingly. So, but I want to know what you pick first, because you're the, you're the Aggie. So what do you think? Oh, if we lose against Western Salem State, I'm going to have a serious problem. There should be no losing against this team. I think this is the only team that we do beat um, when we start our HBCU conference. Not saying this year, but I'm saying for these past two years that we have been out of the MEAC, Winston-Salem has been a consistent W for A&T. And I don't know if that's to say that they're, they're so – if Winston-Salem is so bad, they're just such a beatable team, or that NCAT is – not on the level that they used to be, that Winston-Salem is the only win that they have. That's Neither one is just good things to say. I don't want to say Winston-Salem will never be good, but I don't want to say NCAD it's so medio- like mediocre now that it's just Winston-Salem is always an easy win, always a confidence bo- booster. But that is a winnable game. Like I said, if they lose this game, I, I, you know, I can't, I can't change schools. Like, it's in history. I have the degree literally yeah. sitting next to me. But, yeah. you know, it's... It's looking real questionable if I can continue my faith in A&T right now. 
Man, listen, you better keep your faith, Angie. A- A- Angie, you open some doors, boy. I'm telling you that much. Thank you. So you better, you better, you better let no football game stop that. Like, listen, the jobs and the networking connections of North Carolina, Angie, then the the homecoming access. Y'all got like, man, man, y'all got all them. We got, y'all got Bryce and Tiller coming out for home. You better keep that Angie degree. And 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 the homecoming ticket? What you mean? Listen, listen. A <laughs> T is about to come like Morehouse real quick. Very smart, very very admirable. But the sports isn't about. It's the football is <laughs> really becoming very questionable right now. I might have. I might unfortunately, unfortunately have to become a basketball fan. And I <laughs> love football now. I love like everybody. I'm a football girl to this day. Basketball can literally sit on the bench for the whole year for me, but. Uh, no, actually, I'll become a bowler fan, a t- a tennis a tennis fan before I even become a become a basketball fan. I'm not even doing that to myself. You know what? Put me on track, coach. That's where I'm going to go. But the f- the football team has to get together. I'm not it, coming to this homecoming game just to watch y'all lose. And it's so funny because you legitimately said all the sports the anti's been good at recently. Like I'm like, and, 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 you, and you know, I, I had you watch a basketball a couple years ago. Like, who was, who was, why did you, you watch the NBA a couple years ago? I did. The men's the men's basketball team has always had their ups and downs, but the women I support strong. I think those were the only games that I went to um, mm. during my college career. That is so crazy because it's been three years since I've been out of college. That's yeah. so crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, all of the, like I'm go, every any other team, but right now our football team. I mean they. They didn't look bad, but this has to be an easy win. Let's let's at least go one and one going into Delaware, which we play next week. Yeah, um, I would love to pick Winston Salem. I would love to Division Two, great history. But Pete Pete Richardson ain't walking out walking out there. Pete Richardson is not walking out there. No. You know, so if Pete Richardson was walking out there, y'all would lose. You know. <laughs> But he's not. Fortunately, he's not. So. He's not. He, he's not. I, I, I even say if Carnell Manning was walking out there with Winston Salem, y'all would lose. That the, the Carnell Manning teams when when Winston Salem came down from the MEAC and then they came went back to the CIAA and they made the, that run to, to the Division Two National Championship against Van Alster and Van Alster spanked them, like went crazy on them. Like that that team, I would pick Winston Salem if Carnell Manning was coaching, and he just might be next year. <laughs> You might see him next year, Aria. You might be like, we do the same picks next year. Who you got, Aria? <laughs> I might have Winston Salem. <laughs> listen, it will take a lot of listen. It took a, it took it took a couple of years for me to even become a central fan. It's gonna take maybe more years for me to become a Winston Salem State fan. <laughs> never Hilarious. Uh, but li- listen, North Carolina is gonna win this game. I I, I think that is gonna be demonstrative. And that running back room looks really good. Uh, I, I think that you all have nothing to worry about because I think that we all have the understanding that this is going to be a slow build because, I mean, you're, you're, in, you're in the CAA, you know, um, and you got to get your wins when you get them mm-hmm. and you have to have your moral victories at that this point because if, if, if you don't, if you look, if I'll say this real quick before we go, if, if we, if, if hey, we look at A&T as, as like, hey, they lost the weight for us. That's a hard way to look at it because it doesn't show hope. Mm-hmm. But if you say, hey, A&T lost to Wake Forest, but look at the offense. It looked demonstrably better than mm-hmm. last year. They were moving the ball on Wake Forest. And Wake Forest had some really good guys on that defense. And they were matching that offense pretty much pound for pound in that first half. But ultimately, just they lost because it just it was depth. And then just Wake Forest sort of adjusted. Like that, that is a good win or, or a, a good win for Wake Forest. But, but, but that, that is a win and a loss to me. You, you win and a loss. So I was, I was wearing out on a last week, but no, no, I, they look good. If they go one in 10 and they only beat Winston Salem, I would be shocked. And I would also say they need to come back to the me Okay. <laughs> they need to come back. But Yes, all right. I, I think you have, you have nothing to worry about. I, I think North Carolina is going to win this game. I think they're going to look really good this season. But yeah, look, outside, you have anything else to say about North Carolina? Anti, you, 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 are you, are we, we good? You want to say anything else about, about your school? Go Aggies. Go. That's, that, all, I that, that's, all, that's all, all I have. That's all I have. But listen, all right. This is a great show. Where can we find you on social media? 
You can find me on Instagram at underscore underscore dot martyr day Ari, or you can put me in the hot seat on Twitter at askguri under uh, underscore underscore, or you can go to my new website, ariokilgore.canva.com. I love it. I love it. You're listening to HBC Pulse Radio. Like what you hear? Uh, yeah. Subscribe to HBCU Pulse Radio on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Also, head to HBCUPulse.com to stay up to date on what's going on in the HBCU community. Thank, Thank you, you for, for listening, listening to HBCU, HBCU Pulse, Pulse Radio. Radio.